Hello everybody, welcome to Sprocket Man Designs. As you might be able to tell, I've been evicted from the kitchen. <laughs> Main reason being, it's currently being rebuilt because the boss is having a whole new fitted kitchen. Um, what I intend to start on today, oh, before I go that far, big thanks to everybody who's been watching recently. Hope you all enjoyed watching me mess about with my mate's wheel set. Um, as it turns out, he's really happy and they do look nice in the bike. Um, what you currently see scattered on the bench before you, we've got a small 12 volt DC high torque motor, a couple of very tiny little fittings to go with it. Um, I'm going to be using those to create the drive. This is the mounting bracket that goes on the motor. I've just got to work out the best way of mounting it to something. That's the Allen key that goes with my mounts. So for now, and for their own safety, I'm going to pop them all back in the bag so I can't lose them and start swearing. Of course, we all know I'll put this lot somewhere safe and instantly forget where I've put it doesn't help when you start throwing it all about. Let's put that... Actually, yeah, let's put that with those washers. Okay, that makes sense. I'm also going to put the motor and the fitting up there out of the way. Therefore, if I need to start cutting, grinding, generally gooning about, I don't need to worry about them getting covered in dust. What I propose to do with that little motor is try and decide between these two chain rings to begin with. Uh, what they will then be doing is I'll be wrapping a chain around there. I've got to create some kind of a tension pulley and all of this so I can make a solar powered guarded ornament. And I've got no idea how all the bits are going to join together yet. Um, it should be entertaining, if not slightly mental. But I think to begin with I need to focus on what I'm going to use for, on this to connect it to that little motor, because whatever it is, it's going to ha The motor itself goes at a maximum of six revolutions per minute so it's only quite a slow moving device um, so that's why I'm going with chain wheels as big as this on the bottom of the already built ornament um, it was a, I originally built it to be a wind spinner um, but I seem to have done something completely wrong and it needs to have a hurricane blowing for the wind to turn it. Um, therefore I decided to use a couple of solar panels off dead water pumps because uh, they only have a limited lifespan. So I've got the two of those. Between them they knock out around about 18 volts. Uh, the motor itself is rated up to if memory serves correctly, around about 20. So once I've done all the making in here, it will be a case of creating a nice little junction where all the wires and things get together and hook up to the motor. What I might do with that quite in advance of that time is just solder on a couple of wires directly to the motor so it's a solid hard contact and then using heat shrink just cover it all up so there's no chance of moisture getting into that junction and as I have a box of sections of heat shrink that shouldn't be a problem and somewhere I've got some speaker wire which would make quite a nice junction between the two. Other things I've got to do in preparation for that 
is soldered together um, the wires from the solar panels because I'm running them in series not in parallel uh, because that's the way you get more power out of them um, and I've stopped speaking because I've just forgotten exactly what it was I was going to say brains I must get one so yeah that's where we're at at this exact moment um, I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do it yet I wish I hadn't picked this up because it's going to distract me um, put it down again foolish sprocket man um, yeah so that's where we're at I've had an idea for using for example this old derailleur so if we can I'll ask you to bear with me and use a little bit of imagination now if we say that's the final drive it will be a little bit bigger than that but for demonstration purposes this will do so the motor will be on there oops sorry attached to there with the centre of the spindle chain goes round rig this possibly off to one side slightly so it will sit like that and keep the chain under tension I might actually see if I can do it the other way up so it would sit there so the chain comes out pulley sorry pulley pulley and right yeah so over that pulley behind that pulley around there and back so that keeps it under tension so there's no fear of it slipping that would if I can do it and create a longer length work better in the middle wouldn't it of course it would because then it will pull it in creating no dead space there's no way the chain can run off right so that's how that's going to be so I've got to make a plate for that to then mount it between the little plates drill those out lock one onto there either screw or pin Right, they're not threaded, so I could potentially cheat like mad. And just drop a length of a piece of spoke through. Actually that could make quite a pretty if I do it right. Do a bend of spoke with the threaded end on and then wind the spoke nipple down onto it to create tension and lock it all together. Quite like that idea. When I reach that point and I've forgotten how I propose to join all that up, feel free to remind me, that will be very helpful. So what I'm now going to do is go off and start hunting for lumps of steel that I can cut up to create that. I've still got to decide between this 46 tooth stainless steel chain ring or this rather nice 44 tooth one. The major differences between them, this is aluminium, as I said that's stainless. And the, the, the decision I've got to make between the two ultimately is do I want the extra two teeth just to make it rotate that little bit quicker or would it be nicer having it rotating a little bit slower because I really don't want something spinning around that could potentially take fingers off or break noses, you get my drift. So, I've got to say it from an aesthetic point of view, if I run it upside down like that That 
looks nice with all those bits cut out, so that's answered that. If it doesn't look nice, there's no point doing it. Okay, so that's where we are for now. I'm going to go scavenging. See you again relatively soon. Okay, as you can probably tell, very little's changed. Um, the problem I'm currently having is finding the right size lump of steel to cut out to create a mounting plate here. Um, I think I know where I've got a piece, it's just I can't remember 100% exactly where that is, which is part of the joy of having a brain like a sieve. Um, in the meantime, I'm not going to panic too much. I'll save that one for when I really need a serious panic taking place. Um, what I'm currently thinking, if it'll work, um, is to take a piece of aluminium billet and build around that, so I just cut it back into a shape that will work with the A the rotor and B the mounting plate. The clever bit of course will be making sure I cut it so it's mostly circular but so the hole is dead centre in it. Um, like I say I haven't quite worked out how I'm going to achieve that yet but I'll set fire to that bridge when I get to it I think. Um, so. For the start of this little project, you've seen very little taking place, <laughs> apart from me blue skying it a bit. Um, hopefully in the next one I'll have some more materials thrown together, um, and then from that point we'll actually start getting something built up, and you'll see me cutting things, possibly muttering even more than I normally do, but until that time, thank you very much for watching, speak to you soon.